Namaskar, uh, respected director, sir. With your permission, could you could we begin the event, sir? Yes, yes, you can. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, uh, respected director, sir. Uh, Doctor Dr. Kalpana Gopalan, Indian Administrative Service and additional chief secretary government of karnataka uh, professor rekha singhal senior professor at iim ranchi uh, professor aditya mishra uh, chairperson uh, of the atal center for leadership policy and governance our respected candidates uh, faculty members and staff at iim ranchi and all the guests of our winter school who have kindly agreed to participate in this benedictory event we would like to welcome you all to this final valedictory session of the 2021 Winter School of Atal Vihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance. And, and we are very proud to tell you that we have had five days of enriching sessions by uh, bureaucrats, by industry experts, and by academicians from across the country. And we hope that our candidates have benefited from the event. Our Guest for today for the final valedictory function, Dr. Kalpana Gopalan. Uh, she's a PhD from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, and she's a 1987 batch Indian Civil Services uh, Officer, Indian Administrative Services Officer. She has won a number of awards, including the Mother Teresa Women Empowerment and International Human Rights Award 2019. Uh, she also holds a master's in public policy from IIM Bangalore. She was rated among the top 2% of doctoral candidates in the past decade for her research on infrastructure and public-public and public-private partnerships. A gold medalist and university topper in her undergraduate and master's, she was a visiting fellow at McGill and Concordia Universities, EU fellow at Salerno University and Maxwell Scholar at the Syracuse University. She trained at Harvard and Chicago Universities and at the London School of Economics. She has presented papers in many national and international seminars and conferences and has published three books and many journal articles and delivered more than 250 talks on public uh, and social policy. She is also a visiting fellow and faculty at the National Institute of Urban Affairs and Institute of Social and Economic Change at the, and at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. We are very proud to have you here, madam, and we are also privileged to have you for this event, and we hope that our candidates and all the guests present here will benefit from your immense experience. We'd thank also, you so much. Thank you. We'd also like to uh, welcome our Honorable Director, Professor Shailendra Singh, who is a uh, senior, professor. He was senior professor at IIM Lucknow, and he was also the Dean for Research at IIM Lucknow. With, uh, Professor Singh has more than three decades of experience as an academician, and he is also a fellow of the National Institute of National Association of Psychology. We are very proud and privileged to have you, sir. We'd also like to uh, welcome Dr. Sunil Bernwal, who is a senior Indian Administrative Service Officer and who was also the speaker for our previous session. Finally, we'd like to welcome Professor Rekha Singhal, who has also Grace the event and she is a senior professor here at IIM Ranchi. Thank you, uh, all the guests and all the candidates for attending the event. I would now like to request Professor Adit Mishra to please introduce a little bit about the center and about IIM Ranchi. Good afternoon, distinguished guests and honorable directors. I feel honored to apprise you about IIM Ranchi. IIM Ranchi belongs to the League of Globally Renowned Group of Institutes of Management. IIM Ranchi is the ninth IIM established in 2010 with NIIF ranking 20th position. Institute currently of IPM, MPA in General Management, MBHRM, PhD, Executive PhD, PGXP, and other certificate programs and postdoctoral programs. IIM Ranchi proudly lays claims on its carefully designed curriculum, a values-oriented approach, and a holistically nurturing environment. Our programs are aimed at grooming students to enable them to face challenges of the real world, to make them efficient leaders who are grounded and humble, 
to instill in them a quest for excellence and not just for achievement. Having said that, with a group of defensive military strats, guided by the most competent and capable faculty, we can truly an institute with the difference. And once management thinker Peter Drucker said, management is doing things right and leadership is doing the right things. So believing in that, Atal Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance is a tribute to Honorable Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ji as he was a statesman who had started the state. The center aspires to work with the vision of Honorable Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ji. Once John Maxwell said that a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. So believing in this, we are following whatever Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ji has given in directions. The Atal Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance aims to conduct multidisciplinary research in the domains of leadership policy and governance. It was incepted on 20th August 2018. It envisions to become the vibrant knowledge center which takes forward the scholarly conversations in leadership policy and governance. It also aspires to establish itself as think tank and provide professional consultation, advice and support to government, public sector undertakings, local administrations in the implementation of their schemes and policies. It intends to develop a pool of leaders, administrators, and managers with a strong foundations in policy and governance strategy. In the end, I would like to thank participants, speakers, and the staffs who were involved in this particular winter school. And in the end, again, you know, to the participants, I would quote Vajpayee's two lines. Kya haar mein kya ke, kinchit nahi vayavit mein. पर जो भी मिला यह भी सही वह भी सही वरदान नहीं मांगूंगा वो कुछ पर हार नहीं मांगूंगा सो कीप योर सेल्फ वेरी मोटिवेटेड एंड प्रॉस्पर एट इन योर करियर पाथ थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रोफेसर मिश्रा we would now like to request our honorable director sir to please present the welcome speech for the event thank you sir dear kalpana ji balnawar sahab my dear faculty members and participants i am very happy to be here and welcome all of you to be part of the winter school of atal vihari vajpayee center for leadership policy and governance let me just say that uh, last four days have been eventful and maybe you have gained some knowledge some experience some practices how to well upon various issues related to policy and governance and leadership i am grateful that kalpana ji is here who will be delivering the validatory address and also uh, giving you the certificate of completion of this winter school uh, i am also very very thankful to sunil ji who is also a great uh, uh, officer was a topper in his uh, own year of uh, civil services uh, has been associated with the dharkhand state for very important positions and uh, and as uh, spear headed uh, all the work of chief minister's office as the uh, principal secretary of uh, chief minister of jharkhand in 2019 and now he is a joint secretary at uh, ministry of home affairs so welcome sir 
my dear colleagues you have contributed to the success of this uh, winter school i thank you from bottom of my heart and also thank aditya mishra and professor hajarika for um, giving me this opportunity uh, i assure uh, all the participants that this is not the uh, just uh, end of our relationship this is the beginning of our relationship we will give a certificate today but uh, for any of your academic queries uh, you should be associated with i am gachi and atal vihari bajpay center in future also and i also invite uh, to contribute to blogs uh, where you feel keenly and try uh, to make your blogs research based so that in i am gachi can put that um, blog and atal bihari vajpayee centers blog and it can be disseminated and your creative contribution to the center is always welcome and i will request uh, the honorable guests padma ji to be associated with this uh, center even in future and on any policy piece if she has her own think piece her own opinion she can always contribute to the center and same request is to bagnwal ji and other is officers and civil servants who have contributed to the center's program my request is that they uh, remain in touch and contribute to the center because this is a the free enterprise uh, non partisan enterprise although we have the name of patel bihari vajpayee ji who is a statesman for the country but there is nothing that if you have a view which is uh, intellectually supported and research supported even if it is a different because we respect diversity of views is not that only one kind of views can be expressed and other kinds of views are not expressed so you are most welcome to contribute to that and uh, dr hazarika had requested me to open uh, and inaugurate the blog of uh, the center so that uh, blog is uh, being open now well all of you are uh, welcome to contribute so it is done uh, and, uh, and uh, right now lot of uh, debate is going on uh, farmers uh, that three um, ago um, based blast and msp has been one of the critical issue so professor hajarka and myself have given our view on msp which briefly summarizes that uh, it is something that should be there but that should be as one of the administrative tool it should not be given uh, the legal status and the places where msp is there for the produces um, that is covered large number of other produce um, other uh, things should also be included in that but uh, it should not be taken uh, as the resort for those farmers uh, who are only producing wheat and 
paddy. I will say we have the glut of meat and paddy in our FCI rounds. So in, now we also need to collect process, iron seeds and others. And we have also suggested that uh, things uh, should be such where in short term produces which gets um, spoiled very soon, very quickly. Uh, we should also have the facility for purchasing all those things, processing all those things. And uh, the agencies should uh, develop a system for marketing, etc. And this is the first hard piece that we have created. Uh, you can critique them in this, you can also give the alternative point of use. And we as a academicians feel that free expression and sharing of thought will bring some solution right now there is a passage. So I stop here. And again, welcome Padmaji and Bernwalji and other participants and faculty members uh, for uh, sparing their time and participating in this Kalpanaji, in this valedictory uh, session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, respected director, sir, for your kind words, also for inaugurating the uh, blog of the center. Before we move ahead uh, for the address by Dr. Kalpana Gopalan, uh, we would like to uh, point out two things for the benefit of the participants and also our request for the participants of this winter, uh, winter school. Firstly, we will be circulating a feedback form to the participants and uh, the participants are requested to provide their honest feedback about the sessions that we had at the winter school so it's an anonymous form so you are free to express your uh, feedback on that and secondly we'll be requesting the participants to please provide a small video uh, a very small video you can record it as a selfie video on your mobile phone or even using your webcam on your laptop just uh, one minute or two minutes would do just your experience of the winter school and how uh, how you benefited from the winter school. Uh, thank you uh, to Director Sir, to all the candidates. And now we move ahead for the address by uh, Dr. Kalpana Gopalan, Indian Administrative Service, who is an additional Chief Secretary of the Government of Karnataka, for the valedictory speech from her for this winter school. Thank you. Thank you so much. You see and hear me okay? Uh, before I begin, uh, Professor Singh, uh, this, uh, it's really interesting that you took up uh, the MSP as your first blog, the inaugural blog, so to say. About a few years ago, 2015-16, I was uh, Principal Secretary, Food and Civil Supplies. And uh, MSP was one of the programs that I implemented. So it will be really very interesting to look at, you know, the the execution of the MSP program, so to say, how we implement. Maybe your next winter school or summer school on governance should have the topic of MSP. It will be very interesting, really, to study it from both sides, uh, the, the theoretical or the policy-making side and then the practical implementation side. So that's just uh, to flag that note. Uh, distinguished dignitaries, Organizers from the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership, Policy and Governance, faculty and staff of IIM Ranchi, and my dear managers of tomorrow. I am privileged to address you all this afternoon at the valedictory session of the Winter School on Leadership, Policy and Governance. When you entered B school, you crossed the threshold 
from a student career into a professional career. Don't let the classrooms and the lectures fool you. This school is not a college. It is an incubator. It prepares you for the life that you will emerge into, the life of a practitioner, a management professional. From the first moment, even though you may walk, talk, look, and study like students, you are, in reality, professionals. And every step you take, every move you make, will reflect that fact. As you spend your days and nights for two years in lectures, assignments, group discussions, case studies, and your professors try to make you adept in business and economics and marketing and operations research, the pressure cooker atmosphere of a management school will convince you that you have seen it all, done it all, nothing could be more challenging, nothing can daunt you anymore. As you launch your professional careers, you will be euphoric that you have arrived. And yes, it is true that you will cross an important milestone in your life as you enter or restart your professional career. At the same time, it is equally true that your journey, my friends, has only just begun. I recall Hamlet's words to Horatio in Shakespeare's play, The Hamlet. Hamlet. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So that is where you stand today. You are a batch that will face some unique challenges. A fact that should make you both proud and apprehensive. As you complete your B-School education, you will step into a post-COVIDian working world. In 2021 or 2022, will you be just a graduate or a composite professional? Look at the world around you. COVID-19 has forced us into a prolonged timeout. It has brought radical lifestyle changes. As we move into a calibrated opening up, it is time for us to begin contemplating the end of the crisis, envision what the world will look like in its aftermath, how the pandemic has changed the way that we live and work, and what we need to do to adjust to the new normal of the post-COVID-19 world. Why has COVID-19 thrust this imperative upon us? Does a crisis by itself ensure reform? Just have a peek into history. Every great crisis to mankind has seen a period of rapid counter responses. In challenging times, we question accepted realities devise quick solutions, often outside the usual compass, some of which may be effective enough to become normal quotidian practice. This was demonstrated in the world wars, as well as pandemics such as the Spanish flu. History also suggests that the global economy is remodeled in significant ways after a major crisis like COVID-19, spurring the adoption of new technological strategies and business models. A SARS outbreak in 2003 is seen as a causal factor for the adoption of online shopping by China, which resulted in Alibaba's rise. The balance of payments crisis in India led to the paradigm shift of liberalization, globalization and privatization, the LPG formula, in 1991. 
The economic and humanitarian crisis unleashed by COVID-19 is thus an opportunity to reform sectors such as skilling, healthcare, the unorganized sector, and education, which are the underpinnings of our political economy. What changes will we see in the post-COVID professional world? First, we are witnessing several shifts that are taking place in the world of work. I see three vectors of professional change, the accelerated importance and use of information technology, unconventional ways of working, including freelancing and work from home, and in and increased, there's a disturbance there. Is it fine? I see three vectors of professional change. The accelerated importance and use of information technology, unconventional ways of working, including freelancing and work from home, and increased inter-organizational and intersectoral collaborations and networks. Second, these changes will demand personal transformations from each of us, of which three are cardinal, embracing uncertainty and change, becoming a continuous learner, and practicing personal and collective social responsibility. Third, capacity building will emerge as the single enabler and tool available to us to navigate the changes that we see in the professional and personal world. To leverage capacity building, we need to focus on everyday leadership, focus on the frontline and backroom workers who are vital to decision making and implementation and design training programs so as to train teams and not just individuals. Now, let me elaborate on each of these. What changes do we see in the professional world? COVID-19, has increased digitalization in all spheres of our professional world, whether it is education, healthcare, governance, or entertainment. All these demonstrate the growing acceptance of technology to help us feel connected. As people become more comfortable with technology and service providers upgrade their infrastructure, creating a better pipeline and more streamlined and user-friendly interfaces, technology becomes easier to live with day to day. COVID-19 has propelled us to experiment with work from home on an unprecedented scale. WFH has gone beyond our quotidian processes and scaled new innovative heights. Recently, my daughter, who is a lawyer, completed two transactions, the Facebook Geo, and the Facebook Google deals. These were remarkable because the stake that Facebook and Google purchased in Geo, the negotiations were conducted entirely remotely, online, completely avoiding face-to-face -face meetings because both countries were under lockdown when these transactions were being done. Another shift that we may expect is the emergence of the gig economy. Each of us will have to get used to becoming a freelancer. Remote hiring of talent will become the norm, with corporate positions opening up to skilled candidates everywhere, prioritizing skill over pedigree and geography, all of which is good news for both the economy and the talent pool, making talent pools more diverse and businesses and economies stronger. Gig economy and pervasive freelancing will be bring in cooperation and coordination across sectoral silos. 
as freelancing becomes prevalent, teams will be self-created rather than being curated by leaders and will be more interdependent, more collaborative, more agile, and more flexible. Let us now move to the second point. What personal transformation is required in a post-COVID individual? Pragmatism demands that we survive the present moment while we, while we build ourselves to thrive in a very different future. The first personal transformation that the post-COVID challenge demands from us is the realization that change is the only constant. This calls upon us to embrace uncertainty, develop equanimity, mental balance, emotional intelligence, and agility of thought and action. Next, becoming a continuous learner. Continuous learning opens our minds and changes our attitudes. The gentle, uh, gentleman who introduced me mentioned that I did my PhD. He also mentioned that I belong to the 1987 batch of the IAS. What he did not realize perhaps was that the PhD was much later than the uh, IAS. I got into IAS in 1987. I did my PhD mid-career, mid the master's and PhD in public policy mid-career in the years 2004 and 2013. So I graduated uh, my doctoral convocation took place in 2013. So it was mid-career. So I myself tried to be a continuous learn learner because continuous learning opens our minds and changes our attitudes. To function effectively in the rapidly changing world of technology, we need to learn new things to remain valuable. Those not making use of this opportunity will stagnate. Do not be left behind. Our third and most important self-transformation is the practice of personal social responsibility and collective social responsibility. We are familiar with CSR or corporate social responsibility, but CSR is still someone else's job. It is up to each of us to adopt personal social responsibility. We have each a duty to each other. Personal social responsibility is still easier to practice, say by teaching a child or helping a destitute person in need. But what COVID-19 has brought home to us is a larger collective social responsibility. The health of our communities depends on our individual actions. Thus, it calls upon our collective social responsibility that emphasizes our responsibility to the community. So, as you can see, COVID-19 has thrown up challenges and changes in our professional and our personal world. The tool that enables this professional and personal transformation is capacity building. What aspects of capacity building should we as individuals and as a nation focus upon? This brings me to the topic of your winter school, leadership. Every big crisis is a test of leadership. But COVID-19 is not really about what leadership we are used to, political influence or corporate power. It is about the everyday leadership that we as individuals and citizens demonstrate in our daily lives. Therefore, our capacity building should focus as much on qualities and character traits as on specializations. Traits such as calmness and equanimity skills such as communication and problem solving, and the attributes of a work ethic and compassion. These should form part of skill development 
just as much as technical skills. Second, the front line and the back room become important. In an increasingly digitalized world, with social media creating a virtual reality, presence and authenticity become even more important. We can procure a bed, but to get a qualified nurse who understands infection control or a good pulmonologist is not something that we can procure in a month. These are long-term investments and highlight the importance of the frontline and backroom workers and teach us to respect dignity of labor. Third, the focus should be on training teams and not individuals. We saw that the pandemic makes freelancing acceptable as well as calling for greater collaboration across teams and organizations. It is likely that future teams will comprise permanent, temporary, freelance and mission employees and this diversity will call for greater need to build cohesion from within the members. Our pedagogy should mandatorily include group situations, case studies, self-reliance and decision-making situations, problem solving, immersion experiences and the like. In conclusion, let me say that choices, not crises, determine our opportunities. COVID-19 has shaken up the world like never before. The global change that we see happening with the pandemic is unprecedented and perhaps even incomprehensible to human minds. Yet, amidst all this, opportunities lurk. It is time for governments, businesses and individuals to prepare for the worst but also prepare themselves to recognize and utilize these opportunities and keep the faith that we may transform to a newer, stronger and reinvented planet. Thank you all very much. Before I close, just a brief note, I am addressing IIM Ranchi once again this evening at 5 p.m. with Polynomics, your public policy club, where I will be speaking more of my experiences from the IAS. So those of you who are interested may join in. Coincidentally, both came on the same day. Uh, so thank you all very much. It has been a pleasure addressing all of you. Jai Hind. All, all the best to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Gopalan, for those very enriching words, and I believe uh, they they also they also have helped the participants learn a more a lot more about about the uh, challenges which 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 uh, which uh, they might face in the post covidian world and how they should deal with them. We will come back to you in in a few minutes, uh, Dr. Gopalan. Uh, for a short interactive session, uh, we would now like to request uh, Dr. Bernoual for two uh, for two small words or two small sentences on the uh, winter school as a part of the validity session. Uh, thank you very much for uh, asking me to speak for the validity session. Just before this session, I uh, took one of the sessions on leadership and government. So I find there is a lot of uh, enthusiasm in this school and the participants seem to be really keen to learn how are they going to build on their professional career. Uh, let me thank I am Ranchi and the Atal Bihari Bajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Policy. This is uh, the center which has been set up and since uh, its uh, establishment, it has been taking up uh, so many uh, projects, so many courses 
not just the people from jharkhand also from people across the country are getting benefited and after summer school this winter school is a uh, good addition and i'm sure even in this time of pandemic when uh, physical classes are not taking place using technology and in this virtual mode there has been good response and i, I am uh, faculty the professors the director who has been uh, really looking forward to all new kind of uh, innovations uh, new ways of uh, uh, take uh, doing these courses i uh, this has been helping it out and uh, in this uh, state state of jharkhand uh, by presence of uh, i am its faculty director and all uh, the institution itself there is a huge uh, Uh, benefit the people of a state has been deriving and using technology now the whole of country will be gaining much more than they have been uh, through the physical classrooms so once again i must thank the uh, director mr salender singh who in last few years has been taking so much of interest in uh, to the participants i think a lot of uh, work has been done in getting good speakers in this program by interacting with the participants of this course so once again i thank you all the organizers and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity thanks thank you dr banwal uh we are very happy to have you here for the valedictory session and we also thank you again for your previous session in this winter school uh now we go back to dr gopalan again and open the floor to questions from the participants uh man this is rithik singh here uh i had a question yeah uh ma'am you were talking about uh, the diversity in work ethic culture that freelancers and uh, part time workers contractors all are going to work together uh and you even talked about the geo deals with facebook and uh, other companies uh how has the government uh, uh kept an aspect or a change towards this change uh, matlab uh, how's the transition happening or what is the face of the government towards these kind of changes uh, by hiring freelancers and etc other uh, working professionals okay uh, one thing is that uh, circumstances have uh, kind of forced government's hand in uh, when the covid struck uh, when i speak of diversity see normally in uh, government what happens that everything is we have departmental silos and instructions flow down from the top to the bottom and sometimes feedback also moves up what we have had to do with covid and normally when there's a dispute what happens is that hierarchy takes care of it i think uh, mr sunil will agree with me that very largely in spite of cons uh, consultative mode of functioning that some of us adopt hierarchy takes care of most conflicts of uh opinion but with covid just see just take that example of covid you have let us say a group of medical practitioners policy makers that bureaucrats like me and politi politicians having to sit together and take a decision right uh, say about vaccination protocol 
or about the protocols to be followed for uh, uh, you know home uh, isolation things like that then that instruction or decision flows down and it has got to be implemented by the asha worker or the policeman on the road or somebody who is doing survey collecting the information this is not a very normal situation so you have you know the departmental silos already breaking up because of covid i am not saying that government initiated the change but government has had to cope with that kind of change so you have let us say a policeman or an asha worker who is implementing the medical decision which has been translated into a government order or instruction by a bureaucrat so you already see the number of you know departmental silos which now have to had to merge together so this is one thing which has happened the other thing that whether government has been open see uh, from the outside it is a fact that government looks like one monolithic entity comprised entirely of ias officers like myself but this is not entirely true almost ever since not now not with covid but uh, uh, 30 year odd years ago when i joined service even then we were you know uh, having consultative or uh, collaborative work with ngos uh, non profits and maybe with industry media definitely so it has always been the case uh, yeah maybe you could say in early days of independence we had the uh, bureaucracy the government the bureaucracy with the ias at the apex maybe ha- handling a lot of power and a lot of responsibility come 1987 when the panchayati raj legislation was first enacted here uh, in karnataka and then later on we had the 70- 73rd and 74th amendment the local bodies and panchayati raj amendments to the constitution we have had to work collaboratively even at the grassroots level and that takes for a lot of adjustment and i was there right in the middle i came into karnataka in 87 when panchayati raj legislation so we had this big transition that even not just at the state level but even at the district level down at the mandal level gram panchayat level we have had to work collaboratively so it is not that government has been a monolithic entity throughout but more and more you know structurally or systemically we are opening up and you can see that there has been there's a lot of buzz in the media about lateral entrance into the ias in, uh, into as joint secretaries so that kind of thing is also happening that those are more systemic changes but in practice very gradually and perhaps uh, not very visibly but uh, definitely substantially government has been op- uh, opening up and working collaboratively and many of us uh including i am sure dr sir mr sunil and myself we have a collaborative and consultative way of functioning throughout so that has been the case so you will know it when you actually start working with government or in government that it is not so closed uh, an entity as you think of it from a b school i know that i have been in a b school myself and it took me, uh, me a lot of effort to disabuse notions about government among uh, my b school scholars does that answer your question most definitely ma'am uh, just one more last question uh, i am open <laughs> then i'll uh, reduce the monopoly uh, uh, you were also talking about technology making life easier uh i really have this uh, query because even i have a technology background that uh, the government is also adopting technologies and uh, as far as safeguards are concerned because technology is something that can be abused uh, what is the government doing at the grassroots level to uh, curb and put put in safeguards uh, to avoid uh, certain actions that might harm uh, panchayati raj and all these systems because these are very vital uh, to the development of any system for that matter the regarding cyber security and uh, you know cyber crime and safeguards at the, the legal level we have the law and we also have a cyber crime cell now almost every state has a cyber crime cell that said in day to day practice i must uh, say that we are not as care- cautious and careful as we ought to be uh, that uh, 
mm, consciousness of uh, safeguards has not yet percolated uh, through the system is what i would uh, say so there's a free use of gmail for instance uh, we wake up when somebody's uh, account suddenly gets hacked uh, so this happens but uh, yeah the systems are in place but uh, in practice in day to day practice i think there's a lot of education which needs to be done uh, see one thing is that uh, what any kind of virtual practice does is that it disperses uh, so the, like let us say farmers who want a khata it is for their land they could organize themselves and come to the district collector's office so they were, now it, you know you have boomi and other applications which you know, they have completely removed the need for anyone to come to the district collector's office and make a representation to get their khata at the same time now these farmers are not disaggregated it is very difficult for them to come together and therefore if there is one let us say somebody's khata is been uh, changed without his knowledge or through some hacking mechanism how does that one individual you know he cannot organize mobilize the rest of his group because they are all desegregated across geography so this uh, is something that we need to understand we do build in safeguards we in every um, state government now has an e governance uh, department or cell or some entity is there and we have maiti at uh, the union level but at the same time that education which needs to happen it it is really very hard to do when, when you don't have connectivity you cannot demonstrate how things can be hacked you see so it you you are actually facing a challenge because on the one side you need to expand connectivity you need to ensure that every part of the, your country is connected so that you get the benefits of e governance at the same time you know you need to be able to percolate that consciousness which takes a little bit of time it's a wonder that you know we have not heard of major mishaps which uh, which also means that to an extent there is some vigilance and these departments of e governance or uh, uh, e uh, itbt we call it in karnataka they do their job and cyber crime within the police they do their job but i think much more can be done even i, I don't think even among urban users there's a great deal of consciousness people wake up only when you know your bank account is hacked or something otherwise you know we just merrily go along <laughs> hoping for the best yeah yeah i can see you please the lady in a red ja maroon jacket ma'am i have a question I if there's somebody uh, i'm lavanya ma'am yeah uh, i have a question that is somewhat related to what epic asked me so uh, we uh, know that there is this pervasive negative perception of the government right it's pervasive everyone will say no government no nobody is working it's like this it's losing people and so on right but um, i think this pervasive and i use the word pervasive negative perception is at best a uh, pointless and at worst a hindrance uh, to the you know we called it a wicked problem with in one of our sessions and to the wicked problem of policy making right so uh, how uh, exactly do you think we can go about improving the state maybe get the name the huge monolithic idea of the government out and uh, think of the people as just people who are working at the best of the capacity uh the first of all it's not pervasive uh, because there i would really beg to differ this is an urban phenomenon urban educated upper class feels that sar sarkar does not work you just have to go into any village and the faith and trust they place in you uh, is enormous and uh, moving and actually and uh, mr sunil will agree with me that that is what keeps us going uh, that uh, you know they uh, i don't know the 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 trust the affection and the acceptance of the indian rural uh, so called illiterate class is uh, is something which has to be experienced to be believed and um, we in the ias particularly government at large are uniquely fortunate 
to be able to experience that throughout our lives. Uh, I, do, I, I don't know whether I can show it here, but I'll see whether I can get my LinkedIn page. A few days ago, I was in uh, Udupi and uh, I met uh, the fisherwomen uh, of uh, a Samstan fish market. Is there a share screen option or something here where I can show you these pictures? They are on my LinkedIn page. Let me see whether I can. Let's see. Uh, give me a little bit of time, Lavanya, because what to do? You have, you know, kind of motivated me to disabuse you and as well as, you know, clarify this. Let me see whether I can do this. I've just uh, downloaded a couple of pictures. Oh, where do we see? Let us see this. Anyway, these women, they, the first time they are meeting me, I had gone to see their market. They had a few uh, uh, issues with the Gram Panchayat, so which I said I would sort out. But uh, the kind of, you know, they just embraced me. There isn't any other word. They just embraced me. And where is the share screen option here? Let us see. Ma'am, down below, there will be an option I, I, share. I'm just, I'm just uh, I got that. Let's see. I'm just, but my entire screen is showing uh, just the gentleman who asked me the first question. Now, now let's see. Can you see this picture now? It's a little yes, small. Yeah. yeah. So these are the ladies of the fish market. Very articulate, very talkative. We spent one hour just chatting like sisters. And uh, they just put their faith in me and said, we leave it to you and you, you know, please get this done. Can you see this now? She's the, uh, the lady in purple, Violet. She's the head of that fish marsh she's the head of the women's group so you have women's entrepreneurship here you have given them this building which you can see in the background that is the fish market it's a huge building and um, they just embraced me with their affection so it's not real and it's not really true that you know they uh, people don't have faith in government that isn't uh, right at all <clears throat> but at the same time it's a i must say that it is a creaky machine uh, mostly because one is that there was that over emphasis on specialization and it's not just true of uh, government it's true across the board that we over specialize so much that we forgot that there should be a holistic thinking and a holistic designing of programs and it's not just true of uh, Sarkari programs, it's true across the board of so many things that we do. The second is that in India, we have failed to align uh, self-interest and public interest. So we seem to think that at some point, these are at, or in conflict with each other, that uh, government or gov uh, you know, the public is just a milking cow and you know, let's make the best of it. Uh, Fault lies with all of us, not just uh, those who implement the schemes, but those users as well. So there are reasons for that. Government is opening up. In fact, government is opening up more than academia, I must say. that uh, This was not the case when I entered IIM, but today I can say that we are willing to make systemic changes to induct professional talent within. Whereas academia, you cannot enter. If today, after 33 years, I want to enter an IIM, I have to start as an assistant professor. I can't start off as a full professor. So there's a very big change which is happening within government, which is not happening in other sectors. So uh, what, what we can do, which was actually the, the final part of Lavanya's question, there are many things we can do. We within government should really let people know how hard we work. And it's a fact that we work very hard. We work all the time, actually. There's there's no real full stop to government work. It just goes on and on and on. And uh, I, 
something like uh, b schools assignments uh, but uh, you know <laughs> but the pressure cooker is uh, is always on it pressure cooker when you are 20 is different from pressure cooker when you are 50 and uh, so but we live in that pressure cooker uh, we don't do a good job of educating people on anything even the things we, that we do but the, we did make a change with covid where very many governments came up with you know dashboards and long sops as to how which people may not read but it is still there for uh, for those who wish to know and understand so we within government also need to do a lot outside government people need to realize how hard we work and um, somewhere it becomes that government is just about power and money and money brackets corruption but government is a lot of responsibility and many of us take that most of us take that responsibility very seriously even those who are corrupt are still accountable and responsible and even they have to take so that is something which i think people outside need to understand so, so very long answer <laughs> speaking from the heart to your question ravanya ma'am thank you so much because i i realized my view was very narrow in that sense and um yes you definitely right about the inf- about telling people that you know people work so hard in the government because i wouldn't have known unless i heard so many ias officers speak to us through this winter school yeah. and uh, well now i have a better idea i'll i'll try not to ever say that okay <laughs> that's not you have though very pretty name thank you thank you so much from my suppose yeah kalpana ji um, if you want to come to i am gachi as a full professor we have a branch called professor of practice and we i will i will write to you phd and yeah. have a considerable professional experience even in administration or industry they are invited at place as a professor of practice so it's yeah. not we are closed we are also open and we are also transforming <laughs> thank you thanks to no professor i will i will avail your offer so yeah. Thank you. I'll thank be writing to you. you soon. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, we have time for I, I believe one or two very short questions. One most likely. Uh, so, anyone would like to ask the final question probably to Dr. Gopal. Ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Greetings, ma'am. Myself, Harsha. So, ma'am, like I have been seeing your profile for like quite long time. I am, and I get to know like you are a person of English literature than history, and then being on a prime position of in in administrative services, and then coming back again to like a, 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 after like a, in two thousand, like going for I am Bangalore, and then again for at least a PhD thing, ma'am. I really want like. like reflect from your views how like we as individuals who look forward with this public policy and governance thing how we as be persons of academic can look forward to same like can you reflect something in whole your diverse uh, academic background okay uh, see the thing is uh, things were different in my time so there will be a little bit of change today uh, my life has been rather serendipitous i started out as a humanities student i what my think my resume does as in mention is that i went into iit madras to do my phd just after completing my ma uh, iit madras had a humanities uh, cell at the time but they did not be a technological i was in iit madras i in fact topped the common examination for sira Uh, what is the common examination for research admission it was called at that time sira it was the parallel of uh, je for research uh, i got in iit madras i was there for a year but uh, they didn't have a good fit for english so uh, i at that time wanted to do a phd in english and uh, so i then in fact ias was the fall back option which i wrote got in and uh, finally my desire to do a doctorate you know my that dream was fulfilled as late as 2013 uh that said 
uh, if you wish to enter into public life, that you have a sense of social responsibility, and I have a lot of people writing to me and asking me, please let us collaborate with you, please let us join with you, we'll do. It is not the case that you have to be in government to be a public servant. That is no longer true. Just look around you and you will find that there are people who are in need of your help. It could be help in the form of just a kind word. It could be financial support. It could be sharing something that you know. Look around you. Those whom you feel most needed, you extend help to them. And believe me, you start with one, it will grow. You need not, you know, do anything systemic. It will organically grow. The second thing which I would advise is that do, uh, don't be so idealistic that, uh, you know, uh, you think that, you know, I, I'll, you know, become a sannyasin and I will start uh, uh, serving. It works for some people. It's not that it doesn't work at all. It does work for some people. But you will find and you have to be prepared for it that you'll have Lavanya or someone else who is your compatriot and your college mate and she will be earning in crores and you wouldn't. My daughter's starting salary, she started two years ago, her starting salary was equal to my 15 years salary. Right? So that is the disparity here. So you should not lend yourself to a life of frustration. So do get into, you know, a paying job, a good job, a paying job, a lucrative one, but spare some time for public work. Every day or every week or every month, as your schedule allows, do something. Choose some area. And this is the third thing which I would like to say, that choose some area which is your passion. Now, it could be, you know, you if you are an engineer, it could be engineering itself where you have an exp expertise. Or, you know, you may have a hobby. You may be a good musician or you may be a good painter or something. So it could be an area of your expertise or your passion. Try to share that. Now, I have a friend who, my schoolmate, in fact, who spends her spare time. She goes and sings in hospitals in the ICU ward. She's a good singer. She's a housewife, otherwise she's a homemaker, but she sings in hospital wards in her spare time. Now, you could simply you know, go to a hospital or sing on the street and your life make life better for someone, okay? Or, you know, it, it could be anything else. If you're, if you're good in English, then teach the children around you to speak English. So it could be an area of uh, your passion or your expertise and you try to share it. Start small and then it will grow on its own. Don't think that it is only by getting into the government. When you're getting into government, believe you me, you are lending yourself to a life of many constraints, which you know you will not have if you're a public servant freelancer, right? Because we, we do labor under a lot of, you know, DOPT says this and uh, we have our departmental regulations. And of course, we have scrutiny from so many agencies. But you can still serve and have a lifetime of service without, you know, becoming a government servant. So that is something which, you know, I think each of us should do. I don't know whether IAMs have NSS. I don't know. I am Bangalore as far, as far as I recall. We did have an NGO cell, but we do not, did not have NSS. But I would recommend NSS for everybody. The National Social Service Scheme, inspired by Mahatma Gandhi, it is actually the best thing you, do, you can do. Because on a shoestring budget, that program, I was the head of the NSS until recently in my previous post. And they do wonderful work. And you'll really get to know the real India. You'll get to know the people who painted that backdrop behind you. You see, that, so that is the kind of uh, thing. So be a public servant all your life, not necessarily a government servant. This, I think, if I could leave you with that sense of personal social responsibility, I would have done my afternoon's job. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we we at uh, I am Ranchi are also very happy to inform you that we have been also doing some small ventures as a part of our social responsibility and and to inculcate the spirit of public service among our students. We are a part of the Unnat Bharat Avyan. We have a Samarpan club which uh, works 
for the society which works for the welfare of the local people and we have also adopted a village uh, in near ranchi it's called the rasabera village where we have worked for creation of eco tourism facility and our students the students with an engineering background they have worked to create water supply system for the entire village and and, and to and we have also uh, created health checkup camps and and we are trying to also do our best uh, to work as a responsible organization and to reach out to people in the area thank you thank you thank you for sharing that uh and now we are into the final two steps of the winter school uh for this is only for now and we would now request uh dr gopalan to kindly uh present the certificates although virtually uh, you could just uh, declare that we are presenting the certificates from you we present the certificates of the winter school on leadership policy and governance of the atal bihari vajpai school of leadership policy and governance i am ranchi congratulations to all participants so uh, we are presenting the certificates to uh, mr pradeep kumar sahu uh, mohammad moshin hashmi uh, ms lavanya mr harshul singh mr suresh prashad verma abdul halim mr ujwal kumar is jyoti saini mr ritik singh and ms shehar telly thank you participants thank you madam for kindly gracing the occasion we now uh, would request uh, professor dr rekha singhal to present a vote of thanks for the event thank you madam yes so good afternoon everyone and thank you dr gopalan such a wonderful interaction and yes i noted your key points starting from lifelong learners to that personal to collective responsibility social responsibility and the top of it was be public servant not necessarily be government servant so indeed on behalf of i am rachi we are thankful to you for sharing your rich experience and then you combine both academics i am as well as administration so nothing can be better than that ma'am we are thankful to you from bottom of our heart for spending your time and sharing your experiences and i believe this will go in long way for each one of us who witnessed it uh i think i must also thank dr burnwal uh that's one of the example that he was there in the session as a resource person he was there all through the session this valedictory session uh just an example that it's not talking of lifelong learning experiences or lifelong learner but i have seen him on other occasions also and i have seen him not only talking but practicing so dr banwal many thanks for owning i am rachi and supporting motivating and collaborating with us um yeah i have a a uh, long list i know I, but i don't want to miss anybody because without them it would have not been possible to achieve whatever we have achieved and i'll begin with after that i'll begin with our chief guest on the in inaugural session and that was dr madhukar gupta uh, who is also a, who is also ias but retired chief secretary from rajasthan state so we began with chief secretaries and then it was such a balanced approach in this winter school probably more than me the participants will appreciate so they had a lot of people from academics but equally strong from administration and then the blend of both and that is what i really admire so uh, dr gupta also gave a lot of practical learning experiences followed by not only ias we had ifs indian forest service and dr mr r p singh he talked about skill development and entrepreneurship a key to youth empowerment because skill development and youth empowerment and entrepreneurship i think these are the needs of the day and that was certainly very very useful interaction 
then like dr gopalan talked about covidian period we had another person dr nitin madan kulkarni who himself uh, now today i'll use was because today only he has taken another responsibility in the state uh, he was yes health secretary when he took your session today he has taken another responsibility and during the yes and then you can imagine from health to land he has been made commissioner dealing with the land issue so now you can see the adaptation skill development relevance of all those things till yesterday you were doing something very very important thing health secretary starting from covid to managing covid to vaccination and expectations from all the stakeholders and balancing and yes i'm sure each one of you must have enjoyed his session and first hand learning experience how he managed the state of jharkhand and jharkhand is known that it has managed covid in much better way in the country i don't want to compare with the state but i'll say in the country uh, then mr shashank kumar i think team building is something which nobody can ignore the importance of team building team building leadership governance policy i think they are the threads interwoven and without that you cannot have fabric so he talked about team building and entrepreneurship and that is relevant not only for entrepreneurship but also for uh, governance leadership policy making and everything dr hira lal yes i'm smiling because the title of his session was my moments of truth with good governance and uh, i'm i'm smiling little bit because i touched little bit good governance so i don't know finally did you find balance between the two approaches because he had experience first hand almost every day every minute i had experience first hand but not to that extent and that is where i think participants must have realized how to balance with the background of academics and how to balance learning from the practitioners and then dr sarkar big data for public policy all of us are realizing the importance of it even dr gopalan talked about and uh, i remember rithik always because uh, he's with the background of it and it policy we had discussion so big data for public policy because public policy cannot be in the absence of data it's the data who tells where are you where you want to lead and what is the background and that was have been very very useful and i want to thank from bottom of my heart to him then we had ritwik mishra i'm talking of all external without whom this would have not been possible <clears throat> monitoring and evaluation in government and approach to policy making because policy we had realized that it's not a decade effort it's a decades effort it's not one decade and therefore monitoring and evaluation which tells are we did we started rightly are we moving in the right direction does it require some adaptation or adjustment and that's what was first hand learning i'm sure each one of you must have learned a lot and being in jharkhand and don't talk about coal otherwise also it's not that the coal belongs to jharkhand coal belongs to the country and we are leading country in terms of coal and mr shekharan shekhar sharan talked about the journey of coal miner and i'm sure it must have been very very interesting session for each one of you ms ira singhal yes social welfare and that's what dr gopalan was talking about moving from personal to collective and from public from government servant to public servant nobody stops us to be public servant and then challenges in formulating and implementing schemes related to social service i think all of us can be part of input as well as we can be part of receiver and that's what is social welfare and social service so all of us are connected dr bernwal talked about leadership in governance i think i have no words to elaborate he himself is known as a leader he he is not that he's a official leader he's 
recognized, respected, accepted as a leader, not only in that state, but everybody knows him. And then I think I'll, know, I'll be failing in my duty if I don't thank uh, my own internal colleagues who contributed. And I believe you must have enjoyed those sessions as well. And I will begin with Linda Singh. And that's what we see leading from the front. He took two sessions. And that's what we are thankful to him for sparing his time and contributing to the uh, winter school, not only in taking sessions, but overall guidance for organizing winter school. Professor Rohit Kumar, Professor Gaurav Marathe, Professor Shakshi, Professor Hazarika, Professor Mishra. I think I can only thank them, but we thank, keep on thanking each other. So I think they must have also learned a lot during this association with so many external speakers and the learning must have been. Our learning is immense for us. It's not only we gave something, rather we have learned a lot from our external speakers. I think before I thank to our other people, all these speakers, all this guidance would have become, would have been useless unless you participants would have not been there. And you, each one of you were life, blood and life wire of this program. The way you took interest, that really made us that, yes, we have a lot of hope in the country. And the hope lies in the youth like you, who's going, who are present leader, who are going to be leader, and you will show the way to the country. Our entire hope of the country is with youth and we uh, were personally, even in the last session, each one of you had such a lively, interesting questions. And that shows your concern, not only for the theory, but for the practice. How can you bring change? How can you contribute? So your presence has only made these sessions possible. Otherwise, even if all 14, 15 speakers we would have sat, we were useless. So a big, big, big thank goes to each one of you. And then certainly I want to thank coordinators of the center, Atal Bihari Center for Leadership, Policy and Governance, to Dr. Aditya Shankar Mishra, Professor Hajarika, and certainly Professor Gaurav and the director sir, for that. Prachi, who was always probably were connected with each one of you and including all of us, every day reminding ma'am tomorrow is your session and she was chasing everybody. And IT cell provided the platform to interact everyone, even though we are at a distance, but I think nothing has stopped, nothing had inhibited our learning. So we realized that this COVID or pandemic was not the first time. The pandemic is also not the last time, but the learnings of COVID will always remain with us. And that's what is the interaction, motivating each other and learning from each other. So again, once again, I thank Dr. Gopalan, Dr. Bernawal, our director, all participants, and the administrative support staff of the school. <coughs> thank you so much. Thank you, each one of you. And we look forward. It is just a beginning of relationship. It's not the end of relationship. It's the beginning of relationship. And we are beginning a new or higher level of relationship, please feel free to contact center or resource person whenever you feel you want to discuss something, wherever you feel we can be of some some value. To you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Director, sir. Thank you, all our dignitaries and participants. With this, we would like to declare the winter school formally closed, but we would uh, like to stay in touch with you. Please feel to reach us. Uh, feel free to reach us anytime, and we hope to see you again sometime soon. Maybe this time physically in IM branch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, uh, uh, excuse me. Yes, yes. So sorry for the little inconvenience, but my name in the certificate in Hindi is like little wrong. I will be emailing the right name. Is it okay? Uh, yes, yes, please, please. Sorry, sir, for the inconvenience. Uh, 
also i have a suggestion since we're not physically all together do you think we could have a virtual photo which means you just capture yes, the screen yes yes like yes package. we need it we need it if is everyone okay with that okay so on 3 2 1 smile okay i got a picture and send it to everyone thank you thank Great. you so much thank you so much thank you everyone thank you so thank much for this amazing experience exactly thank you very much yeah. thank you everyone thank you good morning respected director sir good morning uh, dr gupta chief guest of our event and good morning respected participants and other attendees for the event uh, so with your permission director sir can we please commence with the event can i start good morning honorable director of iia kanchi Dr. Shailendra Singh. Good morning, Dr. Madhukar Gupta, Indian Ministry of Service, and Chief Secretary of Rajasthan. And good morning, participants. Second Winter School of Atal Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance at IIM Ranchi. We are all pleased to have you today at the event, and we hope to have five days of a discussion, a learning session, and a great experience for all the participants and all the educators in the event so to begin with the event i would like to invite dr adipya mishra who will take it from here and also introduce our honorable director and the chief thank you ladies and gentlemen Good morning. Welcome to the leadership policy development. So I have been told uh, not to speak Greek and Latin in my welcome address. But I am sure nobody would mind if I quote a great Greek philosopher Plato in the start of my address. Quote: Good actions give strength. ourselves and inspire good actions in others this i found as the essence of all three virtues for the basic quality of the man so based on this virtue only based on these three things only our winter school as well as the center is established and we would like to continue the team forward Good morning, everyone. Once again, and a warm welcome to all of you at Winter School of Civil Engineering. I am Rachi. The Winter School is being conducted under the aegis of CBB CLPG, which is the Center of Excellence under I am Rachi. Before I proceed further, let me take few moments to introduce the center. The Atal Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance, which is also known as CBB CLPG. it aims to conduct multidisciplinary research in the domains of leadership policy and governance it envisions to become the vibrant knowledge center which takes forward the scholarly conversations in leadership policy and governance it also aspires to establish itself as think tank and provide professional consultation advice and support to government public sector undertakings local administration in the implementation of their schemes and policies it intends to develop a pool of leaders administrators and managers with strong foundations in policy and governance strategy to serve the purpose we have been conducting seminars lecture series round tables and in today's covid times webinars e symposiums etc we felt privileged when the center hosted president vice president of india honorable sri venkatey venkatey naidu ji senior minister retired general sri vk singh ji among other dignitaries with the same objective the center decided to conduct 
the summer and winter school the summer school in 2019 was a memorable event and i hope that the winter school 2021 too will be full of learning and experience sharing event for all the participants as you know the constraints about the offline event hence we are conducting sessions to virtual mode but i assure you that the learning will be real i feel extremely honored to introduce the chief guest for the inaugural session dr madhukar gupta ji who is a former indian administrative services officer madhukar gupta is an engineer mba law graduate and phd in economics he has a masters in public administration from harvard is a mason fellow and masters in public policy from maxwell syracuse he has studied and researched with accomplished academics including stephen coven michael porter joseph stegel amart kusin ricardo hosman jennifer lenings and yasan at harvard law school hbs mit brookings uh, uh, syracuse maryland cornell and flitter school in the national universities like gwu university of maryland university of hawaii ben gurion university israel leading university netherlands and us singapore and many indian institutions have hosted him as visiting scholar professor and speaker dr gupta has been principal secretary higher education and also vice chancellor of university of rajasthan and rajasthan agricultural university he is an adjunct faculty at iit chennai bits and thapar institute of technology he has traveled to more than 50 countries for professional and academic work and won many national awards for npc and award he has worked in governments of india rajasthan and tamil nadu as team leader in united nations development program consultant to edb and sri lankan government non profit sector cooperative sector as managing director in state road trans Corporation and the State Cooperative Dairy Foundation Federation. He coordinated the Wood Earthquake and brought in Western India for the UN and Gujar Education for Rajasthan government. Uh, he, as a practitioner, Dr. Gupta has had a long tenure of 16 years in four divisions as divisional commissioner, DM in three districts, and SDM in two places. Let me take this opportunity to introduce. our honorable director professor salem singh ji now prior to the present role as director of i am rachi he was the dean of research and a senior professor in the area of human resource management at indian institute of management lucknow he had also served as the president between 2013 to 14 and has been elected as fellow in 2018 of national academy of psychology india Professor Singh earned MA in my uh, in psychology from the University of Allahabad and PhD in organizational behavior from IIT Kanpur. His PhD dissertation titled "Executives Under Stress: Explorations in the Structure and Dynamics" won Indian Council of Social Science Research Publication Grant Award. He has more than 34 years of post PhD research and teaching experience. He also has a vast and varied experience in training, administration, and consultancy. Professor Singh has delivered various lectures, presentations, and keynote addresses at senior universities, institutes, and business schools around the world, which include IITs, IIMs, Triple IIT, Banaras Hindu University, University of Cambridge, Aston Business School, University of Kerala, Sri Lanka, and many more. Last but not the least. I welcome all the participants and audience to the Winter School. In behalf of EVB CLPG, I would like to congratulate the participants for joining the program and look forward for your engagement during the sessions. I wish you all the best. Now I would like to invite our honorable director sir to address the participants. Thank you. dear dr madhukar gupta my friend has been very active in helping industry and government uh, nitin madan kulkarni sahab 
secretary, principal secretary, health, Jharkhand government, my faculty colleagues, and dear participants. It is really heartening uh, to have you um, in uh, the Winter School of Atal Vihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership, Policy, and Governance. You may be knowing as uh, the Jharkhand state in its uh, political structure has been carved out during the year 2000, during the Prime Ministership of late uh, Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. We at the institute thought it appropriate tribute that uh, we should open a policy research center at the institute in the name of the true statesman, Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. It's a two-year-old institution, but it has started working in the area of leadership policy and governance and has undertaken several research studies and as Aditya Ji has already told that uh, very successful with summer school in 2019 and then this winter school and we have been organizing webinar seminar on various topics concerning government government and public at large i welcome one and all who are associated with this program and wish and hope that the five days that are ahead will be eventful, inter interacting and refreshing in terms of knowledge, in terms of your curiosity, and will go a long way in uh, imparting uh, certain kind of uh, knowledge as well as clarifying issues in the area of leadership policy and governance. Uh, I will say, wish you all the best for the program and welcome Madhukarji and looking forward to hear him uh, in this program. So, Aditya Ji, wish you all the best to take it forward and start the program right away. Dr. Radesh Mishra, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your research. Now, I would like to the inaugural session, Dr. Mukhtar the participants and the audience. Dr. Mukhtar Dr. Shailendra Singh, Director, I am Rati. Professor Aditya, my younger colleague, Principal Secretary of Health from Jharkhand, faculty of I am Rati and their students. Also, participants in this program, winter program for leadership, policy, and governance. I am really thankful to Professor Shailendra Singh for having given me this opportunity of being with you virtually for this leadership program. He and I go a long way. Uh, we have shared our opinion, we have shared our views for the last, I think I would say 20 years or so. And I have seen how he has contributed to the domain of management and management learning in this country in Lucknow and now in Ranchi. Uh, Ranchi is a difficult area, all of us know that. And in my previous assignment with the government of India in the Ministry of Heavy Industries and Department of Public Enterprises, I was interacting with 
nearly 350 public sector undertakings owned by the government of India, which also included a few undertakings in and around Ranchi, like Econ, Heavy Engineering Corporation, Coal India, and others. And I have visited Ranchi any number of times during my tenure with the government of India. Before Before I come to the subject of leadership, policy, and governance, for my younger friends, I would only like to say, and I'm sure Professor Chalandra Singh will agree with me, we are more experienced than most of you. You live only once. And all of us want to make our life meaningful. It is all written in the Shastras that you have to contribute. You are in this world to contribute to this world. Every day we are taking, we are partaking of resources of this world. Are we giving back to this world in whatever form? You know, any corporation, any company, I have handled this CSR folder for the last six years for the government of India. And we have also tried to give shape to this policy. Now, every corporation is there to make profits. But at the same time, every corporation entity is also there to contribute to the greater good of society. Bill Gates is not the chairman or CEO of Microsoft, but he is the chairman of Bill Gates Foundation, Warren Buffett. One of the amount of contribution Warren Buffett makes to people across the world through different programs is unimaginable. At the end of the day, we are here to earn profits for corporations, public, private, but we also, final destination is to contribute to the greater good of society. Now, having said that, whatever I have seen in my personal life, the time from our birth to death, all of us eventually have to land up in the burial ground or in the cremation ground. Have we enjoyed our life? The concept of enjoyment, satisfaction varies from person to person. And I am not saying what Shastra say, I am saying it from my personal experience and I would need validation from Professor Shalem Singh. Now the interval between birth and death, have you enjoyed your time? People call it satisfaction, people call it enjoyment, we can call it by different name. Have Zindagi jo hai, Zindagi ek bahut haseen anubhav hai. Or is ko apne jiya ya nahi jiya. And concept of enjoyment or satisfaction will vary from person to person. Look at your own brothers and sisters. They are so different from you. Children born from the same parents, having lived in the same environment, they are totally different. Now, have you enjoyed your time? One. Second. Have you contributed to the well-being of your own family, of your extended family, of your village, of your town, state, country, world, whatever? Having been born as a human being in the world, have you contributed to the world? And it has to start from your own family. How can we contribute to the world if we don't contribute to our own family? But then family is just not enough. Family, it has to begin with family, but not end only with family. As somebody has said, that I want to leave enough with my children that they, should, that they should be able to do whatever they want to do in this world. But I do not want to leave so much with my children that they don't need to do anything in this world. So, and number three, finally, do you want to leave a footprint in this world. Once we are not there, do we leave something behind that people talk about us? 
even if people don't talk about us do we leave a footprint in this world so basic idea is god has given you this opportunity of studying in an institute like i am bachelor how many of look at your colleagues look at your classmates who could get into i am bachelor or similar institutes how would they be feeling about you so having got this opportunity you have to make the best of it and you will only be able to make the best of this opportunity if you spend your time in bachelor fruitfully and the most important here is to learn whatever you are here for ideas to learn and when you learn when you talk about learning a lot of learning takes place outside the classroom in the coffee shop in the canteen in the small tuck shop outside the college during interactions in the hostel during informal parties dinners whatever during discussions in the library so you learn so much not only from your professors but also from your colleagues have you tried to step out and get to know about all your colleagues i'll tell you my personal experience when i was at harvard there was this lady and she used to ask some of those very i won't say stupid very inane questions and i would wonder how harvard can let in people admit people like her who practically don't know much so and in harvard what they do is just to ensure that we talk to each other the students talk to each other they would change your seats in every class so you don't know who is sitting with you in the next class the idea is to encourage you to talk to each other let's say we had 200 students in the mp masters of public administration class so they would give a prize to the person who could connect the name with the face of 200 students within 15 days so this lady her name was patricia she was sitting next to me in my class and i thought to myself i said let me get to know this lady she was much older to me about 25 years older to me she was like 65 and there the age profile of students range from back to 22 it could even be 18 or 20 even beyond it so there is no and they are gender neutral age neutral caste creed whatever so i said pat what do you do and when she told me what she did you know i i felt so stunned she said i have been living with the remotest eskimo community in alaska i am their nurse i am their teacher i am their driver i bring the produce to the town i take whatever the need from the town to the community so i have spent 25 years in that community and i don't own a house i have hardly any bank balance but i cannot live without the community neither can they live without me and the moment she told me a story i felt possibly she had achieved much more in life then i had to so the message which i want to give you is there is so much to be done and most important for you is as my professor used to say listen to your inner voice when when dr aditya was introducing me sometimes people used to ask me that there are so many degrees on my card visiting card what does it mean and i would say it means confusion i didn't know what i had to do in my life i didn't have clarity there was a very interesting course called know thyself we try to know about the outer world do we know about ourselves do we reflect do we sit down quietly in a corner in a good environment and think about ourselves varsha has said in punjabi which means translated into hindi that sometimes we go to the temple sometimes we go to the mosque 
and you try to understand the world, but you have never tried to understand yourself. तू चढ़ता है मंदरा मसीह की कदे अपने आप में का पढ़िया है। You have never tried to understand yourself. What do I want? Do we listen to our inner voices? Whatever, whenever, whatever we do, there is some voice which whispers in our ears. Possibly that is the voice of our conscience. What does it tell us? Do we listen to that voice? Are we like a herd of sheep? If you are at I am Ranchi, would you continue in the direction in which your professors or faculty push you? I am I am Ahmedabad when it was set up was basically set up for social entrepreneurship. It was it was not initially set up for businesses. Nothing wrong with being with a business. But then what do I want to do? Two things which we were told by faculty, I had the opportunity of sitting at the feet of intellectual giants. Clay Christensen. Have you heard of Clay Christensen who died this year, last year? He was the marketing guru across the world. And in his first class, he said, Don't expect me to be a nice guy. If you expect me to be a nice guy, don't attend my class. I will be the meanest person in the whole business school. But I can assure you, you will learn. I'll make you really fight for every mark. You would I'll I'll give you assignments. You'll have to work hard. But then my agreement is you will know what marketing is all about. So Two things in life. Just reflect on it. I just wanted to, since Dr. Shalinder Singh has given me this opportunity, I couldn't stop myself from sharing my personal experiences with you before I come to this subject. All of us have special abilities, and all of us have certain likings and dislikings. When I was a student of MBA, every time people will say marketing. Marketing was the theme of the day. It was the flavor of the time. Now it could be HR. It could be something different. At that time, very foolishly, we would say we want to do a marketing job without understanding whether I am cut out for marketing or not. Whether I like marketing or not, two things we we really have to appreciate. One, what is it that we like? Doing? Some of some of you would like to move into the social sector. I'm I'm informally advising one of the biggest NGOs in the country called Pradhan. They have a big presence around Ranchi. Now. They have they have graduates from from the US from foreign countries who have left very lucrative careers to join the non-profit sector. So it all depends. My daughter, who gets a very fancy salary with Microsoft, she's an MBA from Booth School at a very young age. So she wants to join academics. So some of you might like to join academics. So first thing that we need to ask ourselves is, what do I want? What do I want to do with my life? What do I want to do once I move out of I am Ranchi? Second, what is it that I am good at? What is it that I can do better than others? So you should be doing something that you that you can do better than others. One, what you like doing. Second, what you can do better than others. Having reflected on these thoughts, I just wanted to talk about your present winter program, which is on leadership, 
leadership policy and governance it's a five day program i'm told why should we have these programs you know when i when i saw the stone school for the first time i said that's it only one building is the stone school of uh, management at mit we have so many fancy buildings in, in india but an institute is all about teaching and learning it's all about brilliant minds it's all about hard working people it's all about sharing of knowledge and creation of new knowledge if we can are we the quest to learn and the never ending quest to create new knowledge these kind of events are extremely critical in creating not only sharing existing knowledge but also creating new knowledge if we don't allow our students to disagree with us faculty management whatever how can we create new knowledge it's only through discussion nalanda tak nalanda was located in bihar now have you heard about the debates which used to take place in alam the debates which used to take place in greece during the times of plato or socrates till such time you don't have debate vad vivad nahi how will you create new knowledge it is only when you disagree when you dissent when you discuss that new knowledge gets created so these kind of platforms are extremely important for creation of new knowledge before world war 2 management was not a separate discipline in academics we hardly had universities across the world which had a management department economics was there arthashastra you know if you read kautilya's arthashastra it is a treatise on politics and governance not on economics but why it is named arthashastra because kautilya felt everything begins with earth and ends with earth if you don't have resources what will you do what will you do without resources now if we compare india and america i focus on public policy in the us and china and how we can use their public policies for our country now us is four times in size of india and it is one fourth in terms of population compared to india so even if we assume natural resources are the same within india and within the us the ratio is 1 is to 16 how can we assuming we are at the same level of technology we are at the same level in terms of exploitation of resources can we compete with the us the ratio per person is 1 is to 16 how do we compete with them so something which works in the us may not work in india anything which is expensive which is not cost effective any policy which is not cost effective will not it is not sustainable it is not scalable in this country so situations are different so we have to look at our country differently that's what when i was working with the un that's what i used to feel all the time that it's not one size fits all you just can't have one policy for the whole world even for the whole country like india we are so diverse a lot of similarities are there but a lot of similarities also are there so these kind of platforms these kind of winter schools are extremely important in sharing and creating new knowledge and i would encourage you to disagree to say what you feel like
leadership, policy, and governance. I have I have had the opportunity of meeting the former Prime Minister of India, Shri a few times, and I would really encourage you to read about him, to read about his views. First time I heard him was in 86 as a young officer under training in the parliament. It is not for nothing that this center has been named after Sri Atalji, who was not only a political giant, he was also a great orator. And in addition to being a great orator, he was an intellectual giant and a great poet. And somebody who understood secularism and this country so intimately. So, your center for leadership has been rightly named after the other day. Kindly read what he said, what he says about secularism, what he says about this country. How, when he was leader of the opposition, the then prime minister of this country, invited him rather than sending somebody from her own party, from his party, he chose him to speak in the United Nations. And diplomats and politicians of Pakistan were surprised that the leader of the opposition is there to defend his country. That is India. When I joined the civil service, by I had an opportunity of working in Tamil Nadu, South India for five years. And my collector asked me, he said, You are an engineer, you're an MBA. I appeared for the civil service while I was finishing my MBA. And he said, What do you know about this country? What do you know which others don't know? I said, If you want an honest answer, I know nothing. I have to learn from scratch how our society functions, how this country functions. Engineering and MBA has given me some tools. That's it. Nothing beyond that. We also need to realize that we need to learn and need to learn all the time. I also learn every day. I'm writing a book on my unusual, extraordinary encounters with people and places where I learned many lessons, which I never, never knew earlier. I've written a, one of the articles which I've written is on lessons which I learned outside Harvard Business School. As I said earlier, there's a lot which you will learn outside your classroom at I am Ranchi. So it should be, you know, it should be a totally intense two years experience where you learn. But you also realize this learning has to be followed by hard work and practical experience. There's a phrase in Tamil, which translated into Hindi or English, which says, Kuch log aise hain, jo jante hain. Aur kuch log aise hain, kuch log aise hain, jo jante hain, ke nahi jante hain. Four, four categories of people are there. So, if you know about your own ignorance, nothing wrong with it. All of us learn, and we should not be too, you know, MBAs when they pass out from the college have faced a lot of resistance, like IS officers who join the service. So we feel that we know everything, we have a chip on our shoulder, which is not the right thing. As somebody has said about life, ke Urdu aate aate hi aate. till such time you don't hit the ground. You don't have real life experiences. You have a few tools. That's it. And 
you need to sit down with people whenever work, whatever you join wherever you work or wherever you have your training you need to sit down with people on the shop floor on the ground in the office you have to sit down with babus that's where you have to start your learning once you move out of the management faculty life itself is a big laboratory life will teach you what or as they say real world will teach you what you haven't learned here in ranchi at your management faculty but then you have to do your best through events like this leadership program that you maximize as they say in the us something very interesting which i wanted to share with you as a student i also was interested in sports but i could never run 100 meters in less than 13 seconds so i was not selected for the house team and my coach said you focus on something different when i was i was the first batch of icsc and when i was going to play a basketball match against don school deradwar my principal called me and he said there are only 4 months to go for the icsc examination you are not expected to go you focus on your studies i was very angry i tried to argue with him he said no finally he told me he said tell me one thing you are not in the first 5 in the basketball team you are in the reserve why do you want to waste your time he said if you can play for india in basketball you go if you can't if you don't have that talent why do you want to go he didn't allow me to go and then finally after the result of icsc came i was second in the country so when i met the principal he said focus on what you can do better than other so i didn't do 100 meters after that in the us they use a very interesting phrase where they say realize your full potential every student has a different potential you have to identify your potential and work in the right direction to the, to fulfill that potential many students are intelligent but no hard work hard work also has to be in the right direction you know it's not the number of hours sometimes people would say i have studied 14 hours for getting into the civil service i said i only studied for 3 and 1/2 months for 6 hours a day it's not it's not about hours it's not about only hard work hard work in the right direction and hard work with the right strategy so you have to realize your full potential and should you be competing with others in the class yes in a positive way but should you be jealous of others no if every one of you is cut out for a different role you look at yourself you reflect on yourself are you operating at more than 90% of your efficiency or can you step up your efficiency can you do better in the us i i wrote out a paper it was a class assignment and i got a c now c is like just passing d is failing c is on the borderline and my professor was surprised to find that i was not bothered and then she said madhukar can you write it again i wrote it again third time when she told me can you write it again for the third time i got a little upset and i said you're telling a surgeon to write a paper on how to do surgery i said i can do i can perform surgery but to tell me to write a paper on how to do surgery i can't do that she said if you write a paper possibly you will become even a better surgeon So, so the idea is, if you are at 90, can you go up to 99? Can you go up to 
you know i remember when i when i joined the, the first program in the us i was in the supermarket and there was a there was a guy like 6 feet 6 in a track suit and he boy in the uh, supermarket he just signal to me he said do you know this guy i said no he said he is the coach of our basketball team which won the national championship this year so he is like a celebrity now what happens is what is the difference you know people grading rating agencies are there all kinds of things happen in the world don't be bothered about that that i am amdabad i am ranchi shillong whatever let's not get into that these gradings don't mean anything once you are in you are more or less at the same level it all depends at the input stage when you join the i am ranchi where are you and when you leave where are you now how is it that you can maximize your potential to program like you do having said all this let me come to these three points the issues of leadership policy and governance when i was working in the un the un and the world bank were putting a lot of money into africa into south america and they realized that they were not getting enough traction they were not getting enough results later they realized that when the governance structure itself is poor when things don't function in the government the structure of the government is poor the level of governance within government is poor any number of program any number of projects any number of any amount of money is not going to make a difference so what is most important what is most important structure leadership governance comes there after for example the britishers rightly or wrongly i'm not getting into that even today if you look at the british colonies malaysia west indies singapore now hong kong now those countries which were ruled by the british the british created a structure of governance rightly wrongly because they had a few britishers two britishers would be sent to it and they were smart enough at that time to divide the country into districts knowing fully well that this country is so diverse and so huge it cannot be run from delhi or from calcutta so they divided it the district, you know country into districts and a few british officers would run the whole district administration was totally centralized unfortunately even after 70 years we have not been there even today why should the district be totally in the hands of two people sp and the collector if they are not good enough even if they are good enough can they handle so much of work we we have to go on the governance structure the structure of government has to change so it has to change so we have likewise when we say corporate governance corporate governance also includes government even in corporations what is the structure is the control and command structure clear have we distributed have we delegated things right down to the lowest level as peter senge at mit says instead of a pyramidal structure we need to have a circular structure where the team leader the ceo like for example the director of am ranchi is at the center of that circle and all others are within that circle today the ceo of 
one of the biggest corporations in the world, Awaz Nega, has to has to engage even with the lift man, with the door man, even with his driver. He has to say hello to them. When I was working with the UN, uh, UN, my nodal officer, Jyoti Rao, she one day she said, she said, Madhukar, you don't believe these girls at the reception. When you come to the UN office, I said, I don't know them. He said, no, you take them to the cafeteria and have a chat with them. They said, this guy never, say, never says hello to us. So I had come out of a government system. So the, what I'm trying to say is, the days of a paramedical sector are gone. If we really want great corporate, corporate governance everywhere, we have to have a circular structure where all of us are more or less at the same level. And we need to engage with the lowest person down the line. I'll give you a very simple example. India fought three wars with Pakistan, and Pakistan in all the three wars had be better weapons. In 65, they had patent tanks. In 71, they had saber jets. We were nowhere compared to the kind of weapon system which Pakistan had acquired at that time from the US. And we were managing with makeshift equipment, which was not at the same level. But then, why India won those three wars against Pakistan, even the Kargil War? Our of their army is feudal. Officers beyond beyond the captain level do not fight shoulder to shoulder with their troops. Whereas till colonel level, our officers fight as you might have seen in Kargil operations or earlier. The number of casualties of our officers is very high compared to soldiers. You know they are comparable. Because they lead from the front. So that is the kind of structure that we have. And also, in addition to structure, culture. Many things are driven by culture. Now culture takes a while to develop. When I was studying in the US, a South Indian officer asked me one day, he said, you are seen, I serve you because you are senior to me in the civil service. Why do these Pakistan civil servants say sir to you? They are Pakistani. They don't need to say sir to you. And you know what I said? I said, you are South Indian. What is common between you and me, except our nationality? Your language is different. Your food is different. Dress is different. Customs are different. But same nationality. I said, except for nationality, Everything is common with these Pakistani colleagues. I share the same food, same dress, same language. I said, the vision of a country into two countries cannot change the culture. Now, I'll give you a simple example. Railways. Most of you would have traveled by railways. See the culture in the railways. In spite of problems, Today, when you are traveling on a train, the guard will will wave the flag even in extreme winters or in hot summer. That is the kind of devotion to duty. The same culture never came in Air India. To begin with, Air India was started in 1931. Singapore Airlines, which is supposed to be one of the best airlines in the world, Cathay Pacific, based out of Hong Kong, high airways, they came to look at the culture in Air India, but now see the culture in Air India, which has deteriorated and see where Singapore was. So, talking about Singapore, it got liberated in 61. We got liberated in 47. A great leader like Lee Kuan Yee. Lee Kuan Yee's children don't figure in the scheme of things in Singapore. Mahathir in Malaysia. Look at your mother or father in your own family. They are also like leaders in the family. 
and they, they are also leaders. How does a father lead the family? Leadership is not about only being in the front. Leadership is also about sacrifice. My father would provide to ensure, he would ensure that he provides me everything before he provides himself something. It is also about sacrifice. It's also about giving. Especially in a country like India, sacrifice, tyag, tyag, is desh ne janiyo se zada tyagyon ko pooja. Bina gyan ke tyag ho sakta hai kya? Sita, Sita ji ke tyag ko dekhe, Urmila ke tyag ko dekhe, Meera ke tyag ko dekhe. Bina gyan ke tyag ho sakta hai kya? A lot is taught, taught to you in management institutions, whereas a lot is not taught. You will have to search for those for that learning outside. When I was studying in the US, I had already 18 years of experience, and I asked a very senior professor at the business school, I said, what do I learn? He said, you ustad hai unki Spend as much time as you can with people who are masters of their subjects. A lot of knowledge in management is experiential, is shared by word of mouth, not only through books. Books also teach you a lot, but then it's like driving. Can you learn to drive a car just by reading? A girl who sleeps throughout the night, she doesn't get up at all in the night. Have you seen her once she becomes a mother? The, mother, the, the child will, will wake her up throughout the night and the same girl will wake up in the night because she is a different entity. She has become a mother. A lot of us talk about falling in love. We see hero and heroines falling in love with each other in film. But it is all experiential. Till such time, poetry may get the anaga chord hai wa shire. Till such time, you don't experience things yourself. My son, he, he used to play for a school. He won one match, two matches, three ma third match. Fourth match, he lost. And when I met him in the evening, he said, well, say, baat mat karo. I don't want to talk to anybody. It's only when you lose, you realize how painful loss is. Don't be afraid to lose. You will start winning when you are not afraid to lose. Don't hesitate to start walking. Even if you take, as they say in management, it is better to take wrong decisions than not to take decisions. So, governance, as I said earlier, leadership, Lee Kuan Yee. You know, we can, how many, how many management books talk about sacrifice? They don't talk about sacrifice, they only talk about self. But the best leaders are the ones everywhere, in, even in the corporate sector. Somebody like Ratan Tata is so simple. You know, people in management will tell you, Tai Lagao, Ye Karo, Tuta. That's all fine. As a district magistrate, I never used to wear sunglasses. I never used to wear expensive clothes. I used to be very simply dressed. What does it mean? I wanted to give a statement to people that I am like you. Sita Haran ke baad, Ram Maharaj ka vilab jab ayodhya ke logo ne suma, to logo ne kaha ke Ram Maharaj vilab kar rahe hain. Ye to Maharaj hai, phir Bhagawan hai sakshat. To ayodhya ke logo ne kaha ke nahi, ye insani dhesh mein bhi hai. Maharaj hai, Bhagawan hai, par insan hai. इस रूप में इंसान है 
so people appreciated it so no harm it you know leadership styles will vary but that's that's what you need to learn that leadership style has to suit your personality you can't become something different so i i want i want there's a lot to be said you know and what i tried to say today i was thinking you know i spoke to my daughter who is in the us i said what do i what do i what do i say today she said that just speak from your heart and tell them something which they don't find in books so i thought in this you know that address in our grand address i should be sharing my life experiences that experiences and telling you something which i have learned through my own mistakes through through experimentation in my own life so that possibly i can share with you what mistakes i have committed what i have learned in my own life through my 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 professional and academic experiences once again i would really like to thank dr shailendra singh and ranchi for having me on this program and for having me for giving me this opportunity of sharing all these thoughts with you thank you so much I would like to thank dr aditya also who is the coordinator for this program thank you so much and all the best to you for this program as they say work hard but also have fun thank you thank you dr gupta it was really nice to hear from you about your experiences throughout your professional journey and also from your personal life uh, before we move ahead we would like to first inform all the participants about the rules for the upcoming question answer session these rules will also be applicable for for the other sessions in the future uh, to to aid in in conducting the session smoothly and to prevent any echoes which might uh, disturb the sound recording or or create problems in communication so the first rule is that if you want to ask a question you have to send a, a chat with a yes or a question with to everyone so if you click on the chat option you will get an option who do you want to send the chat message to and it should be to everyone and you can type in yes or question and then we will point out your name and you could then ask the question in the future sessions this will be done directly by the speaker who will just pick out uh, the name of the participant who will be asking the question so that uh, there is no echo and multiple microphones do not open simultaneously the second rule is linked to the first rule here uh, do not turn on your microphone unless you have been asked to this will help prevent any echoes or background noises from creeping into the uh, entire recording and the session the third rule is that we will have the question answers since after the presentation by the speaker is completed or the speech is completed so that uh, we can have it smoothly after uh it is over and we have ample time for that so uh, we would now like to open the floor for questions from the participants for dr gupta uh, and you can start off by typing a yes or question in the chat box and we'll pick your question or put out your name from the chat box and then you can turn on your microphone and ask the question okay so uh in the meantime when we when we wait for questions from the participants i i uh, had a small question from our side from the center side to dr gupta as to uh, dr gupta you have told about your experience in working in the csr sector particularly in the public sector enterprises in india so this is a relatively new new endeavor that csr has been now made compulsory in india so what has been your experience in dealing with and convincing the executives as to the importance of csr and what are the hurdles that you have faced here in this regard no 2014 uh, when this uh, provision, when these provisions uh, came into effect a lot of concerns were there when i joined the government of india from the state government in 2015 i was handed over this portfolio because other people were not interested and once the corporations 
officers working in corporations they tested the effects of csr programs they many of them got diverted to csr there are many management graduates officers who have handled operations who have handled marketing for years or there are new engineers there's a girl who used to who works with mazgaon dogs and she was working with a tribal community in the western ghats close to pune four years she has been working with the tribal women and i met her she said i don't want to go back to bombay so i want to continue my work with this tribal women i've been able to do some so till such time i would I said earlier in my own life i didn't know what i wanted to do you know it's like a buffet like a buffet so if you haven't tasted let's, let's say mexican food you don't know how it tastes like request the same to i am prepared to help out to create more opportunities of smaller internships for you these are with private and public corporations i'll try to help out because you should get a clear and once the ceos you know we designed the template for csr national csr award which are given out by the president of imf of india the top ceos ongc Infosys, the CEOs came down to receive those awards. Once you taste, you know, as I said earlier, it is not in taking. You feel the happiest. I have seen two things. You feel the happiest after a day's hard work, or when you give something to somebody, you feel happy. So once you taste giving, you start enjoying CSR. So I have seen a big change in the last five years, and. There are corporations which have increased their CSR funding up to 15 percent, from 2 percent. Mrs. Amanita Mani is the chairman of our foundation, not just for nothing. So there are corporations which spend more than 500 crores in India, both public and private sector. Well, it's a huge country, but then having tested CSR and how you impact people's lives. A lot of people tell me, "Ki sir." इतना आनंद कभी नहीं है पैसे बहुत कमा लिए पर इतना आनंद नहीं है सो आई वुड रियली एनकरेज यू टू गेट अ फ्लेवर ऑफ इट थैंक यू डॉक्टर गुप्ता जस्ट जस्ट टू टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम हियर आई थिंक वी आल्सो वी आल्सो वुड लाइक टू have a question from the audience here and we we'll just repeat it for you although it's up on the chat box already because uh, as a ias or un diplomat we have faced many crisis situations could you share one and also mention uh, there's a there's a question there's a question on the chat box could i answer that yes yes sir yes sir you should uh, can answer that better. there's a question from ritik singh yes you sir. know as a officer in the un three four things are there which i learned one once i said i told my i told my supervisor who was the un country rep who was the senior most officer in the un i said i don't agree she said listen till such time we sign your paycheck you you have to talk our language UN World Bank international organizations have a bureaucracy they function differently as i you know i would like to share with the students till such time you don't start organization you do not know what i start do not want to continue working with the un they used to talk about i'm not running down the un it all the they and having scotch in the in her life and i told her i said i want to get back to government he said why yes 
we have invested so much in you. You know, I got trained across the world. I, I learned a lot. I also realized my own inadequacy. You know, I whatever was my experience was within India, not outside India. The world has moved on. There has been so much of inbreeding in our country from other countries. China, last 25 years, the progress which China has made is phenomenal. If China can do it, why can't we do it? And when I was at Harvard, I used to tell them, if this Harvard banang India, we'll have 10 Harvards in India. Don't just wait and see. So what I'm trying to say is. It is only when you join an organization you realize whether you fit into it or not. Also, so when I told my boss in the UN, I said, I want to play for Team India. I want to be on the ground. I want to soil my hand on the ground. I would also encourage you and also I would like to request your director. You should not feel any. If you know your job, you can function anywhere. So, also, secondly, one of the biggest experiences of the UN was I started thinking of the whole world as a village. South Asia is one, Asia, the whole world, with people from all nationalities. After the Gujarat earthquake, I was their team leader in Gujarat for people from everywhere came and helped us. So, you you don't start thinking in terms of nationality, you don't know. So that goes away. Also, UN uses the latest tools, they use the latest methods. I learned a lot in Bangla. And when I stepped to government, I realized that I needed to learn more. And that is why I applied to four universities in the US, including Harvard, and I got scholarship to study at two, two of them in policy and governance for two years, uh, doing two masters in two years. So, and so much of learning which is coming at you. Otherwise, we are in a cocoon, you know, we are in a bubble where we feel that whatever we are doing is ultimate. This is not true. So, even is a great place to learn, So, but it all depends whether you fit into the organization or you don't. So I, I I would feel I could do much more while working with the government than elsewhere. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Uh, talking about your experiences in, in uh, as a, as a student abroad and also as a diplomat abroad, uh, what what strikes you most about the difference in you know, Education in India and about education abroad. What is the prime difference that you feel is present there in terms of education and research in, in India as well as in the US? No, uh, I'll give you a very simple example. I was talking about that coach in the US. In high school, there used to be students who could do 100 meters in 11 seconds in India. And in the US also, there would be students who would do 100 meters in 11 seconds. After that, in the universities, they would chisel, chisel those students. Search for excellence starts there. How do you reduce your time from 11 seconds to 10 seconds and below 10 seconds? As I said earlier, you're at 90. How do you go from 90 to 99? That's search for excellence. Are we satisfied with whatever we are or whatever we have or whatever we have learned or we have the urge to do better? You know, you can push the bar, you can push the agenda to any extent. We are there at the high school level, we can compete with them. But beyond high school, we cannot compete with them. You know, even I had to stretch out there were there were times when I would think that I might fail. There was a there was a class which I took in advanced corporate finance in Harvard Business School, and all the boys and girls were much younger to me. There was nothing. There was nobody beyond thirty, 
and they had worked in the best of consulting companies they had worked on wall street so to compete with them so basic idea is competition give give yourself competition and if i may say so american systems are highly competitive and some survive some fail but those who survive they do really well so they the product which they are selling is totally different from our product there are people who have done an mba from i am ahmedabad and again done an mba at the harold business school because they are totally different products and it's a highly competitive michael porter's class for example he would take in 80 students in his class from mit harvard the whole boston education system and there would be students from more than 40 nationalities and before that you had to write a paper on a title that he would give you and thereafter every class was so intense you had to read you had to study for 14 to 16 hours as i said earlier it is not brilliance alone it is also hard work and the kind of environment the culture teaching learning starts from 8 o'clock in the morning and continues till 10 o'clock in the in the college here we close classes after 4 o'clock or after 5 o'clock but there on weekend so many events will be there and when you have events you also learn from these events as you are having now so the culture is very very different and the whole focus is on excellence and the, also the culture is on merit you know singapore us are basically societies which are driven by merit if you are good enough you don't need to know anybody there they'll pick you up so i think i think we need to move in that direction thank you dr gupta uh, for our participants uh, we are running short of time and we'll have to move to the next section of the inaugural session today but if you have any questions we will collect the questions from you on email of the center and we'll send it to dr gupta who if he kindly wishes he could please grace us by answering those questions for the help of the participants related to the lecture today uh, Thank you, Dr. Gupta. I now like to pass on the microphone to Professor Mishra, who will take it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Professor Jarika. Uh, what a great session, uh, Professor. It was really scintillating and enlightening speech. I thank the uh, chief guest of the inaugural session, Dr. Murukar Gupta ji. our honorable director professor sri salendra singh ji who has taken uh, both of uh, these guests both of these dignitary have taken time out of their busy schedule and have graced the occasion then i would like to thank participants who have joined this program and will be along with us for next 5 days audience of inaugural session both joining offline as well as online and my faculty colleagues at i am ranchi our it and administration departments as well as media cell i thank all of you let me first talk about uh, some of the gist which uh, you know our uh, guest have talked about and that it uh, suddenly uh, let me to recall one akbar alawari said says that you know ai mere ahbab kya kare numaya kar gaye ahbab means close friend numaya means some great work hai mere ahbab kya kare numaya kar gaye bhiye bhiye hue nokri mili pension liya aur mar gaye but in today's times as per your speech and we also know at the center that we have to give something back to the society something back to the institution something back to the organization and we are on that path we are also quite impressed with some of your quotes it says that you know leaders lead by setting example and managers lead by authority so we have to be leaders have to become the leaders 
and because leader, leaders have also led from the front we have multiple examples we talked about army generals we have many other examples not only from army from social life from political life who have taken lead and who have led from the front then in the end uh, you also talked about that leadership is also about sacrifice and i am total uh, you know agreement with that that leadership is not always about uh, you know taking lead leadership also is about taking lead in terms of sacrifices so i still remember mahatma gandhi spoke that he used to say that whenever you go for policy formulation always have the last man in the crowd on your mind then only the policy will be more effective for the general people so it is an honor to have you as the chief guest for the inaugural session and i look forward to have you in similar events in future at our center i also thank our honorable director sir for attending this inaugural session after taking some time out of his busy schedule and at the end i thank again i once again i thank all the participants audience of the inaugural session our faculty colleagues IT and administration and media cell department thank you